Bayonet. Ooh, I love this series to death. Both this first game and its sequel are some of the best character action games I've played in my entire life. Those guys over at Platinum Games, whoo, I don't know what they're smoking, but I need some of it. The creativity, the style, the class, the campiness, it's all there. This game has it all. I love it. I love it so much. I, I think you should play it too. All the haters will tell you, oh, this game is too weird. It's too out there. I don't want to play it. No, shut up. I'll tell you why you should play it. Listen to me. In this little game, you play as the sexy, saucy, Sultry, oh wicked weave whipping witch, Bayonetta, Beautiful. who uses her hair whipping abilities to smack down some evil little angels and bad demons. Boom. The story follows this very tropey amnesia narrative, where Bayonetta does not remember any aspects of her past life. She encounters hints and finds a lot of clues along the way, but it slowly leads her to a destination that she's not entirely sure of. It plays very fast and loose with archaic religions and different types of mythologies, referring to the eyes of the world as the concept that Bayonetta needs to understand by the end. And it'll all make sense, trust me. It will. Somewhat. The story is obviously extremely wacky and I don't really want to give away too much because I think it ruins the fun. There are a lot of secrets, a lot of secrets for you to uncover as a new player and it would be done so wrong if I spoiled it for you. There's only one thing that I think I'd like to elaborate on and that's the gameplay. Okay, by show of hands, who here likes Nier Automata? Well, I'm sure that's a lot of people. How about Metal Gear Rising? Well, I'm sure that's a lot of people as well. The 3D Ninja Gaiden games? Well, I, I think that's a lot less people now, but I think you guys get the idea. There's a pattern here. Bayonetta is what we call a character action game. So basically what you do is you play as a single character and they have various actions, usually mapped to the face and trigger buttons, allowing you to do several different combos and techniques that freely move into each other. These are one of the games that I think really saved the genre because it progressed it in various ways that I don't think any other game was up to the task for at the time. Bayonetta is a game that is extremely characterized by its freedom and its emphasis of allowing you to choose whatever weapons in your arsenal are available to you. With two different slots and two different sets of combos for each and every single weapon and secret pairings to go along with it that have additional moves, the combat of this game gives you the variety and options that allow you to make the game as fun or as boring as you'd like it to be. And it does give you a lot of rewards for making things mix and match. There is a very solid ranking system in the fights that you get throughout the game with pure platinum being the top and stone being at the very bottom. Now, granted, it's very easy to get the higher ranks in normal and easy difficulties, but trust me, the Jesus real game, Christ. the real game starts with hard. Not only the ranking system, but also the combat in a higher difficulty game should still be somewhat rewarding to the player. But the way that this game twists you and turns you is so fucking brutal that this game has seriously made me lose my mind. It is actually that fucking hard to get the better ranks on the higher difficulties with item usage and the penalties that you get for losing all your HP. It is not a perfectionist's greatest time. It's not fun on that front. As much as I have good things to say about this game's combat and gameplay, the title really shines in its presentation and style. There's serious attention to detail in every single locale. There's destructible things and enemies every single place that you go. The physics in this game are actually really interesting too, especially when you see the implementations of Bayonetta's otherworldly powers from her umbran ways. The music fits the tone of any situation. 
The combat themes are extremely catchy and the slower, more somber music really does speak to that chill, kind of relaxed vibe that you get from slow, smooth jazz. I have this really big thing for the character design in this game because it was really, really well directed. Mari Shimizaki is a very impressive character designer and it really shows here. She brings the heat in these games. It's incredible how you can make such distinguishable people with such few resources and really, really limited color palettes. It's quite impressive. I think it's cool. The cutscenes in this game also have a real flair about them. They have these really nice medium shots. A lot of these are stills with 3D models from the game, usually cut between film reels and seems to have this very still image kind of thing going. Reminds me of a picture book but it's very cool that they were able to do this and work within the limitations of the hardware back in 08. When they brought it back in Bayonetta 2, it was even better because in the original game, there was a film grain, some kind of rose gold tint that was over all of the visuals, which made it look very nice from a uh, enduring standpoint, but it did muddle up a little bit of the still image pictures of the game. What Bayonetta 2 brought to the table was this deep blue that made everything look a hundred times better. Hopefully they bring that back in Bayonetta 3 with the purple aesthetic that I've seen in the promotional material. Now as I stand on my soapbox and continue to sing this game's praises, I would like to address the one big elephant in the room. And that is, why the hell is Bayonetta 1 locked at 30 frames a second? It should be higher than that. Why is it not higher? Oh, what's that? Hang on, I'm getting a phone call. Yes, hello? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, oh, wait, they fixed that? No way. Okay, all right, bye. Yeah, the game is perfect. It's sad that Bayonetta 2 is locked in the Nintendo jail, but it's the best we can do for now. I just want to play the game in 4K, man. Bayonetta 1 and 2 are quality games that come from an incredible studio that only happens every once in a blue moon. Ah, ah, see what I did there? See what I did there? Ah, I'm not funny. But in all seriousness, these games are quite literally masterpieces. Heavily inspired and unashamed to wear its campiness on its sleeve. It is incredible how they are able to twist and turn all of these unique elements into a perfect game i recommend you play it if you like devil may cry go for it that definitely would make kamiya happy because he made the character also but play it i give bayonetta 1 an 8 out of 10 and bayonetta 2 a 9 because these games are so good two green thumbs up go play it now And make sure you play it before Bayonetta 3 comes out. I will track you down if you don't. <laughs>